here with Leslie in his 57 Chevy Bel Air, which is absolutely exquisite. Is there uh, an interesting story about this car? Yeah, it's a, an original California car. Oh, how nice is that? It's a, a 72,000 mile car. It was sold to a little old lady in Napa Valley. Loved this car and drove it up through the countryside all her life. And then she passed away, and then somebody bought the car uh, about 20 years ago and did a frame off restoration, and it was a pretty big deal show car. Yeah, it's and, uh, beautiful. Yeah, but it, they never did any of the mechanicals. <laughs> Just painted it? <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful, but it couldn't, didn't run. <laughs> so I uh, completely rebuilt all the mechanicals, and now it's riding and driving like a brand new car. Wow. It, no squeaks or rattles. No it's, squeaks an ama it's an amazing car now. It sure is. The rarest of cars, colors, which is a canyon coral. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got the original engine in it, matching numbers. Look at uh, that. Yeah, it's about as original as you can find a car. And uh, th this is not original. This is an homage to my youth when right. we did this kind of stuff. And but it, uh, it, it's it's a great driving car. It's it's pretty remarkable. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, thanks for bringing. All righty. Yeah, my pleasure. Lovely. It's got spinner and wheel covers. Oh, nice. it's got all the deluxe stuff that nice. women loved in yeah. their cars in those days. Power steering and brakes. Yeah, power steering and, runs yeah. off the back of the generator. Yeah, isn't that interesting? If you look here on these uh, early Chevys, they they ran the power steering pumps off the backs of the generators. Sort of interesting. Well, it looks like we got a nice British contingent this morning. Look at this, they're all starting to line up. A couple of Heelys, very nice cars, and a uh, beautiful TR3. Just lovely car. Here's a beautiful example of a TR3. Probably the best color combination you could have on one, too, black and red. Oh, and here's the owner. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. Good morning. Tell us about your car. Well, it's a one-owner car. I bought it from an 85-year-old man. And it's a factory. Shame on you. <laughs> His son made him sell it because he was too old to drive it. And it's a factory black car, which is pretty rare. Unbelievable. And it's got all the options, uh, wire wheels, heater, and overdrive. And uh, did you restore it? or? I restored it with my buddy, complete frame off restoration. Uh, it's totally original, all fenders, everything correct. Motor, drivetrain, everything is... Everything's really wow. a rare find. I had another TR3, sold it when I came across this one. Unbelievable. It took you how long? Uh, actually, seven years. Seven years. <laughs> On and off. But it's all factory correct. Would you do another one? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I've done two in a row, I'm done. Yeah, I don't this blame one, you. This one's a keeper. Yeah, I've, I've, I've met very few people that would do another restoration, especially after one that took seven years. That's quite a commitment. Usually people, uh, they lose interest along the way and the cars end up in the back of the garage with laundry on them and it's uh, nice to see that you follow through. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thanks Thank for bringing it. My pleasure. Oh, and black plates too. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. Oh, here we are. One of the later Shelbys. And here's the owner right here. We managed to catch him. What can you tell us about your car, sir? Uh, it's a 1999 Shelby Series 1. Uh, Shelby built 249 of them for the world. Uh, it was originally planned to be 500. And, uh, EPA changed smog requirements, so uh, he cut the run in half. The car weighs about 2,600 pounds. It's all carbon fiber, aluminum frame. And at the time it was produced in 99, Shelby uh, claimed it was the world's fastest production car, top speed 185. Well, I guess you know a lot about your car. How were you lucky enough to get one? Uh, just happened to find it uh, a few years ago, uh, pick it up and uh, now I take it out every weekend and show it. And how did the original owner happen to be one of the lucky contestants to get one? That I don't know. Ah. Well, thanks for bringing it today. My pleasure. It's a beauty. Oh, look at this monster. These, these were made to run. That's for sure.
know, unlike other Shelby's, this does not have a Ford engine. It's got an Oatsmobile Aurora. It's the only time Shelby dealt with Oatsmobile. And uh, Shelby, when he built this car, unlike his other cars, he borrowed other people's bodies. This is his body, his frame. So this is really the only true Shelby ever built, ground up. Wow. And uh, what did they rate the horsepower at? 320 horsepower. The Aurora engine was used by Oldsmobile in the mid-90s for the Indy race team. Good choice of motor. Yes. Um, the interesting aspect, Shelby was a race car driver and he understands how to build a car. You look at the scoop on the hood and it's facing the wrong way. People will come up to me and say, how does that uh, work? Does the uh, air come around the backside? And the answer is no. The air comes in the front of the car, where the front of the radiator, which is right here. And the air coming through the radiator to cool the water, the air becomes hot. And you don't want hot air blowing on your engine. So the hot air is funneled out of the engine compartment before it reaches the engine. It keeps the engine running cooler. And with the slope of the hood, it's like a dam. So the faster you go, the more downforce you have on the front axle. So the car handles better at 120 than it does at 60. Sort of uh, took that technology from the old GT40s, I take it. Uh, yeah, which Shelby helped design. Right. And uh, then it's got the uh, transmission on the back axle. It's a transaxle, and the engine is pushed way back. The car has perfect 50-50 balance. Uh, the weight on the front wheels is the same as the weight on the back. Makes for better handling. I bet. Hey, Tony. And here we have a beautiful example of a TF. Look at this. Chrome wire wheels, everything. We've managed to dig up the owner here as well. How are you today, sir? Very good, thank you. What can you tell us about your lovely car? Well, I'm the third owner. It's a completely original car with just a very few modifications. I put in an aftermarket steering wheel and a little bright work under the under the bonnet because I'm sort of a hot rodder. Uh -huh. But uh, third owner did a restoration 15 years ago, so that's how old the car, the restoration is, the paint and the upholstery and everything else. Is Boy, the paint's years. remarkable for it, 15 it, yeah, years. Yeah, it really has held up pretty well, but you know, it's a weekend car, so it doesn't get driven too often or too far. Right. And how did you happen to find it? Uh, I've always loved TFs. It was the well, I was 10 years old when they were brand new, and a neighbor came down the street in one, and my first reaction was, hey, that car is my size. And I've been in love with them ever since, and it just took till 15 years ago to finally get a hold of one. Oh, lovely. And I'll probably be buried in it. <laughs> uh, I would think after all that uh, work you've done, I, I imagine you don't want to get let it go. Uh, no, no, it is anyone. definitely not for sale at any price. Do you have kids? No, no kids, no wife, no, no family. Wife, no. So no one to leave it to? No one to leave it I'll to. I'll give you my name when the, before the show's <laughs> over. <laughs> I have a long list, yeah, believe me. I'm sure me. <laughs> you do. Well, thanks for bringing it today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we're talking to Erwin here with this beautiful dual Gia. Erwin, tell us about your car. Well, dual gears were named after uh, uh, Dual Motors, which was a company owned by Gene Castro. He built dual engine trucks for the military to move tanks around. And he also delivered cars from the Chrysler assembly lines to dealers. So when Chrysler had their concept cars that they decided not to go into production on, I think one was called the Fire Arrow or yeah, Fire Arrow. Uh, he took it over with their permission and kind of civilized it for the street. And in 1957, they built 117 dual Gias. And uh, not too many left because they were very prone to rust and when they weren't worth anything, many years ago, they were allowed to uh, kind of rust out. So this one was rescued. Uh, this, the seller told me it was Ava Gardner's car, a gift from Frank Sinatra. Now, I can't document that. I wrote to her when she was alive and I uh, didn't get a response. I also wrote to the and spoke to the Ava Gardner Museum back east and they confirmed that you know, she was living in Europe and this is where this car came from. That's as close as I could get. But anyway, I've had it since the late 80s. It was a rust bucket. I actually bought two of them to get enough parts to put it together. 
and at the time I did not know that the emblems were the hard part. I even had my secretary who spoke Italian to call the Ghia factory at midnight, you know, because the time difference. She got the, uh, she got the custodian on the phone, and they didn't know anything about emblems. So I had a friend with a dual Ghia who let me borrow his, and I made up emblems, ended up selling them to dual Ghia people, and met a lot of people that way. And this car is not a stock car. I've modified it for grand touring with a much more powerful motor and disc brakes. And it's a great driving car. It's a beautiful car. Thank you. And um, there's a nice, nice tidbit of information that has always made me laugh. Is Ronald Reagan lost his gear to Lyndon Johnson in a poker game. I found that was and, very funny. And also, uh, uh, Mickey Cohen, the gangster, lost his to uh, the IRS. <laughs> It was the car, the stars, all the, uh, it was a big Hollywood car, thanks not to Dean Martin. Look at the, uh, look at the uh, that's the original D500 motor, that was the early car, the later car was a, a 1, I think a D500-1 or something, that so was the later one. And, uh, as you can see here, the interior is all Chrysler. It's got a lot of the old switches on the dash, gauges, the steering wheels, a late 50s Chrysler wheel. There's a lot of uh, recognizable uh, features on this car from Chrysler. One interesting thing is that round chrome disc on the door. Of course I know. Uh -huh. Hi, what? Leslie. How are you? I saw you cruising. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the round dual disc on the door is where the hand cranks were. When they first came out, they had hand crank windows. But the dual gear owners, who were you know well to do, complained because there was too many cranks. Ah. So they, they they kind of retrofitted power windows to them. But they were all convertibles except one hardtop. One hardtop. So how many of these do you think are left? Maybe 30, and probably 10 of them. Five to 10 have been restored nicely. Oh, this is a beautiful example. Oh, thank you very much. Beautiful car. And uh, this. This hubcap setup, a lot of them had Kelsey Hayes wheels as well. What's the deal with the hubcaps? Well, the hubcaps were how they came. Mm -hmm. and some people put on Kelsey Hayes wire wheels, or if they lost hubcaps and they were, let's say, uh, not the original owner and they wanted to redo the car, it was easier to get put on Kelsey Hayes wires than to try to hunt down hubcaps. I see. So I would, I would think those would be pretty rare to find a set today. Well, there's actually a gentleman reproducing. His name is Scoey Mitchell. Scoey Mitchell? Do you know Scoey Mitchell? If you're talking about the uh, comedian. Scoey Mitchell if, uh, is a uh, movie actor, producer guy. Big tall guy, about big six tall seven. Guy, and he's very into uh, exotic cars. Oh, I had no idea. And he had a dual gear, fossil baker kind of stuff. And uh, he's reproducing those hubcaps. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Here's the emblem for the dual Ghia. As you can see, it's got the Italian and the American flag. Kind of a nice little touch.